Welcome back to the podcast. Let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. We did very, very well yesterday. Um, and here is some proof. Like I said, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageJustD. Um, these are some of the screenshots of yesterday's picks. Um, these are all the plays I said in my video. I just put it towards either straight up bets or parlays. Um, and you can see the timestamps up there as well. I try to wait for the Kings to get plus money on them. They came through, like I said. Um, with a lot of these basketball games, you're really banking on which team has the better bench. And the Kings had a better bench than um, their opponent. And the Nets came through. They have a better bench than the Magic. Um, this five leg parlay right here was Blue Jays, Reds, uh, Trailblazers, Kings. And there was one more. I think it was the Nets in there as well. Um, next, we had the Baltimore Orioles coming through again. Like I said, that was one of my upset alerts against uh, Zach Wheeler. And like I said, he was a former Mets pitcher. I don't like him against lefties. And the Orioles were able to get to him. Uh, Portland Trail Blazers are pretty much a lock because they are in must-win mode. And you really could have got some good numbers on the Trail Blazers if you waited. And once they were down to against the Mavericks in that fourth quarter, you could have got plus money on them like I did. Uh, another one was another parlay, Celtics and Suns. Suns is another team that's in a must-win situation. And that was it. So, those are the pictures from yesterday. Hopefully, we can do it again. Um, we're going to hop into the NBA slate. And we have the Indiana Pacers going up against the Houston Rockets. This one, we have some more outs. I'm not sure about Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, not sure about Victor Oladipo. You got to wait on this news, but it's making me feel more confident in the Houston Rockets because James Harden. All right. I trust the Houston Rockets with James Harden as the number one, um, instead of Westbrook as the number one. They showed no effort yesterday, at least Westbrook. I mean, at least Harden will give you, you know, he'll go on his run where he can just shoot a ton of threes, um, they think they can still move up to that number two spot as well. So that's another uh, situation that they have because um, they're right behind. If you look at the NBA standings, they think they, think they can move up to the number three, so three spot. Um, excuse me. Uh, they're right behind the Denver Nuggets, uh, a game and a half behind. So there's still a chance with two games left. The Nuggets lose two, Rockets win two. They can move up and face the Jazz. Um, either or, it doesn't matter to them. I like them against the Thunder or the Jazz. Um, so, that's either or for them. So, I like the Rockets, minus 278. Um, I'm not, they, they'll probably blow them out too. You might want to take the minus 7 as well. Uh, we're going to move on to the Toronto Raptors against the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, going by Rotowire lineups, there's no Ben Simmons, there's no... We don't know about Joel Embiid. Um, we don't know about Tobias yet. So this is information you have to wait on. But if they're just going up against the Toronto Raptors, if this was any other team, uh, I would choose. May, I might choose the Philadelphia 76ers. But the Raptors are stacked from top to bottom. They're probably going to start their guys at least 20 to 25 minutes, and then they got the bench to back them up: Norman Powell, Chris Boucher, uh, Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. The Toronto Raptors are a far superior team than the struggling uh, and injured Philadelphia 76ers. So I like them as well, the Raptors. Next game, we have the Miami Heat going up against the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder are trying to get out of situation, if you look at this, um, from facing the Houston Rockets. So they might want to lose on purpose, but then at the same time, if the Rockets... Uh, try to get that third spot, then they'll be stuck with them anyway. So this is really, really back and forth situation. Not too sure if they're going to just go all out, um, just win the games probably. But there's no Dennis Schroeder. We don't know about Steven Adams, and we don't know about Nerlens Noel. Um, so it's just Chris Paul, SGA, Danilo Gallinari. On the other side, the Miami Heat are a rock-solid team. Um, as long as Jimmy Butler's playing, they got Iguodala, they got uh, Jay Crowder. They destroyed the Indiana Pacers. 
Uh, Jimmy Butler came out and showed his stuff against T.J. Warren. He said, don't ever put this man on the card with him. And he showed up and showed out. Uh, I like the Miami Heat in this game. It's Even if it was the bench, because they got, they got the better bench, too. Um, these are just better teams. Um, next game, we have the L.A. Clippers going up against the Denver Nuggets. And this one is a little tricky as well. Denver... Uh, Denver might want to avoid facing the Houston Rockets. Um, so I think they might want to win this. But they got to go up against uh, Paul George or Kawhi Leonard. Not many outs for this team. They got Lou Williams coming off the bench. Uh, I'm leaning more to the... Mm, this one's tough. This one is tough. Jamal Murray. I, don't, I will stay away from this. I would maybe take the plus points on the Denver Nuggets side because they, I think they want to win so they can avoid um, the Houston Rockets. But then the Clippers don't want to come down to that three spot. So I would just take the plus points. I'm not really sure on which side to choose. Not yet as of now. Uh, if you follow me, like I said, on Instagram, I'll probably put my picks up one more time and I might have a change of heart. All right, so we're going to move into the MLB slate, which we killed yesterday. Um, we're going in to the first game with Chicago White Sox versus the Detroit Tigers. I had the White Sox. Matt Boyd has been struggling as a lefty. Um, by the time this video comes out, it'll be too late, so it doesn't even matter. Next game, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks. Luke Weaver going up against the Colorado Rockies. Antonio Centizella. I'm going with the Rockies in this one. Uh, since Zella has been pitching like an ace so far this season, um, it doesn't matter if it's home or away. He can even pitch in Colorado. I really liked what I've seen from him. Um, Luke Weaver, on the other hand, hasn't and has, hasn't gone past the fourth inning in his, uh, first three starts. So that's a bad, bad sign going up against these kinds of bats in the Colorado, uh, Rockies lineup. And we're taking that minus 113 for the home team, which is a very, very cheap price. Um, also, this series has been going very crazy back and forth. All right. But I do like the fact that Cincizella has been pitching very well um, at home. Next game, we have the Oakland Athletics going up against the L.A. Angels and Griffin Canning. Griffin Canning um, has been having ton tons of. Uh, control problems in his last start he gave up six walks and gave up three runs already to this team I like the athletics in this game uh, to bounce back Chris Bassett has been pitching very well and uh, has been pitching extremely well away so far this season uh, next game we have the Chicago Cubs Kyle Hendricks going up against Carlos Carrasco and the Indians and you need to know some of these trends, like I told you before, Kyle Hendricks is a home road splits guy. Pitches outstanding um, at home and horrible on the road. Uh, if we go right here, I think I have it up. Kyle Hendricks, just a little, just to show you if I can get that off the screen. All right. So in the two home games, seven innings, two on runs, got the win. Another home game against Milwaukee. I did a complete game three hitter and got 45 DK. The one road game against Cincinnati gave up six earned runs, one home run, two walks. This is what I'm talking about, about this guy. Uh, we're going with Carlos Carrasco, who's back and healthy, still has the K stuff. I like the home team in the Cleveland Indians. Uh, next game, we have the Miami Marlins going up against the Blue Jays and Nate Pearson. Blue Jays came through for us uh, yesterday. They're going to come through for us again. Jordan Yamamoto is uh, got torched by the Orioles. This is a bad franchise for a reason. The Miami Marlins gave up six runs to that team. And now Nate Pearson, who's been a solid uh, starter with mediocre K stuff, can definitely handle the Miami Marlins. And I like that minus 177. All right. Um, and a lot of these games, if you don't, know which team um if it's uh, average pitcher and below average it, it most of these games are going over like late late deep deep in the seventh and eighth inning and ninth inning you're seeing huge comebacks it was like four of them yesterday these bullpens are getting taxed 
um, because these starters are not going their full, you know, their full innings, a full allotment of, of innings. They're not going six, seven. They're going like three, four. And then they're, and a lot of these bullpens are throwing out dudes that are not their number one guys. So if, if you don't know which one to choose, just take the over. It tends to hit uh, a lot of the time. Um, the next game is the KC Royals. Brad Keller going up against the Cincinnati Reds. Wade Miley. I had the Reds as my lock yesterday. Um, today, I'm on the Royal side and Brad Keller. Wade Miley. Um, the very exciting. No, Wade Miley returning from the injured list is a very volatile starter. Gave up a lot of runs um, in his first start. Now he's coming back from the injured list. Don't know if he's 100%. And he has to go up against Win Merrifield, Jorge Soler, and their bats. Um, I trust Brad Keller more. He is a good starter. And I think they can eke out a win against the Cincinnati Reds. This was another comeback. The Royals came back in that uh, ninth inning and took it to um, extra innings. And I'm going with the Royals to get the win today at minus 103. Next game, we have the uh, Atlanta Braves. Oscar, I don't even know how to say that name, uh, going against the New York Yankees, Mashiro, uh, Masahiro Tanaka. We know and love him. He is a very reliable starter for the Yankees. Uh, the Yankees are going to go on a roll right now. They beat the Braves handily yesterday. They got into that bullpen and handled them as well. And uh, Yona is going to be uh, more of like a spot starter going three, four innings. And then they're going to bring in the bullpen guys. And the Yankees are have, have too much of a stacked lineup. To be throwing, you know, four, fifth string uh, bullpen guys to to the Yankees bats. I'm taking the Yankees to get two in a row against the Braves after they were embarrassed this weekend. And we're moving on. The next game, we have the Baltimore Orioles and Wade LeBlanc going up against the Philadelphia Phillies and Zach Eflin. Yesterday, I gave you this good, good gem. I had the Baltimore Orioles yesterday. Today, I do not like them. Wade LeBlanc is not a good lefty at all. Zach Eflin struggled against left-handed bats, but he is good enough, and um, he is good enough against righties, and will be able to handle the Baltimore Baltimore Orioles as the Phillies destroy the Orioles. They are going to destroy Wade LeBlanc, this lefty, Didi Gregorius, Bryce Harper, Gene Segura, uh, Reese Hoskins. Those bats will get to Wade LeBlanc. Um, and we're taking the minus 195 on that side. Uh, next game, we have the San Francisco Giants and Trevor Cahill going up against the Houston Astros and Zach Grinke and Ace. The Giants came back and screwed us. They cost me some money yesterday. I should have, I could have had like another hundred, but that's all right. We're going with the Astros today. They're going to bounce back. They got their ace on the mound. It's not bleed black. And hopefully Green can go Hopefully, can go five, six innings and get into the stronger part of that bullpen. Um, Trevor Cahill is not good. Trevor Cahill came up uh, from the taxi squad and last year in 11, per- in 11 appearances against the with the Angels. Most of the 5.98 ERA, a 1.47 whip. And that doesn't spell well to the type of lineup that the Astros will bring to the table. We're taking that minus 215. All right. Next game, we have the Minnesota Twins going up against uh, the Milwaukee Brewers and Eric Lauer. This one, another team that let us down, the Twins. Uh, we got the Twins and Kenta Maeda, who's a very good starter. They got them from the Dodgers in the offseason. Eric Lauer uh, struggles uh, versus righties bats, and the the Twins are filled with good, good righty bats um, all the way up and down that line, and they smash left-handed pitching. We're going with the Twins here, and I feel pretty confident in that. Might take the minus one and a half because there, there's going to be tons of runs for them on that side. Uh, let me take this, some of this stuff out, and then we're moving on. We have the Tampa Bay Rays and Blake Snell going against the Boston Red Sox uh, and Jordan, not Jordan, and Zach Godley. Now, this one, Red Sox are scrambling uh, to find starters. Zach Godley is coming off a short rest. That doesn't spell well for him. 
So that means he's not going to go his full allotment of pitches. He's just there to get two, three innings. Hopefully um, he doesn't get cracked, and then they really got to dig deep in that bullpen. So you're already giving an advantage to the Tampa Bay Rays, who have their ace on the mound and Blake Snell. I love the minus 167 for the Tampa Bay Rays um, in this one. Or take the over, because I think they're going to put a huge number up on uh, the Boston Red Sox. Uh, next game, we have the Seattle Mariners and Tawan Walker going up against the Texas Rangers and jo uh, Jordan Lyles. Um, and this one, um, just pretty much two subpar pitchers. It's, you got to choose the less of two evils right here. Jordan Lyles is a better pitcher than Tawan Walker. Uh, Tawan Walker still hasn't shown his uh, upside ever since he was a huge touted prospect with the Mariners, then went to D-backs, then came back to the Mariners. Uh, I guess they're hoping that he, you know, brings it back, but no, Texas Rangers at home, Jordan Lyles in that ballpark, uh, the under, no, no, just give me the money line on this one, uh, for the Texas Rangers. All right. Next game, last but not least, we have the San Diego Padres and Zach Davies going up against the LA Dodgers, Tony Gonzalez. Um, here, the Padres have been putting it on the L.A. Dodgers, went in the first two meetings, and now um, they're trying to avoid um, a sweep here. And I'm going to be on the side of the Dodgers to get this win. Padres have been playing very, very tough this year, but the Dodgers need a win. The Dodgers need to win badly. Tony Gosselin uh, pitches good enough. He's going to pitch at least more like a just an opener, and that Dodgers uh, bullpen has been pitching very well. They've been just been getting to like very, very bad errors the last two games. And I think that um, if they stop doing these self-inflicted wounds and, and damaging themselves and losing these games, then they'll just be just fine. And I'm taking the Dodgers in the win. Uh, we have a lot of favorites today, but uh, hopefully it, it this goes well. Hopefully it goes well. If not, like I said, you could take the over in most of these games, okay? Um, those are the, my picks for today. Please check in tomorrow. We're going to be going over uh, UFC 252, the trilogy. Miocic going up against Daniel Cormier. We're going to be breaking down that prelim card tomorrow. And then Friday will be the main card. I'll give you my best bets and predictions on that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD. It's all at the bottom right there. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.